Hey guys, Jared here, Magnetic Men's Club. Hope everyone's having an amazing day. Today we're gonna to talk about the four different attachment styles and how they relate to you specifically and how you relate to your loved ones. Now, an attachment style <clears throat> typically presents itself or manifests itself very young, two years old, three years old, and Although your attachment styles can change, generally speaking, the attachment style that you develop at that age carries with you throughout your life <clears throat> unless you do a lot of work to change it. Now, out of these four attachment styles, there's only one that's good. The other three are eh, eh you don't really want them, but a lot of people fall into these other three, so it's very important for you to recognize these four as a whole, figure out which one you fit in, and maybe figure out where your partner fits in. Because it says a lot about you, and it also says a lot about the people you choose to bring into your life. Your attachment style is measured on two different variables. The first one is your craving or avoidance for intimacy and closeness. And the second one is how anxious you are or how, how lack of anxiety you have towards your relationship and your partner's love. As we go through each one of these, I'll go into a little bit more depth at these two points of origin. So the very first one we want to talk about is really the only good one and it's also as a population whole more than half the population falls into this group and it's called secure attachment now this type of person is very sound and grounded in his or her own energy in his or her own relationship to themselves. They understand and they know how to self-regulate. They know how to self-soothe. They know how to take care of their own emotional needs. But they're also willing and able to allow somebody else, their lover, to help almost lean on when they're feeling a little weak, when they're feeling maybe a little tired. They have that openness about them or they're secure enough about them where they come from the frame of, I'm okay and you're okay. This type of style, this type of attachment style, the secure attachment, understands that they enjoy the intimacy and they're really not afraid of opening up to this person. They're not afraid of opening up to their lover. They're not afraid of um, knowing that their lover is able to carry some of the burden when they're feeling weak, when they're feeling low, because they understand who they are. They also know that when their lover is not feeling the best, is feeling weak, they know they can come in and help pick them up. So they understand that this is a dynamic. This is a team that they are building within their relationship. And they do view the other person as whole and complete. This type of attachment style is generally much more healthier. They enjoy longer, happier relationships. They typically don't play a lot of games in their relationships. And I'm going to use characters in the, in the hit show Yellowstone. It's a very popular show. And I figured I'd use these characters because most of you guys would probably at least know who they are and you can relate this attachment style to a character and hopefully relate it to is this more like you or not. So in the movie Yellowstone, or in the show Yellowstone, Casey, which is uh, John Dutton's son, has a secure attachment style. He's very grounded. He doesn't generally have a lot of enemies. He knows how to take care of himself. He knows how to stand his ground, but he also knows and he's also able to lean on others. 
if you've seen the show, if you've seen all the different series, all the series in the show, <clears throat> he's the one character that he doesn't really have any bad blood or any bad beef within his family. He loves his family. He's kind of the rock in the family. He's very stoic. He's very quiet. His own wife and his kid lean on him. He's the one who is not emotionally avoided. He's very grounded in who he is. So he has a very secure attachment style. If this is like you, if this resonates to you, well, congratulations. You're in really the only healthy attachment style there is. The second attachment style is called anxious. Now there's anxious avoidant. There's all these different names, but it's just basically an anxious attachment style. They come from the frame is I'm not okay, but you are okay. This attachment style, <clears throat> they crave closeness. They crave intimacy almost too much. If you ever been in a relationship or maybe this is resonating with you where you go all in really fast and you're always concerned with what your partner is feeling, what your partner is thinking. You're always trying to please your partner because you don't want your partner to leave. This is a very anxious attachment style. The other thing about anxious people, anxious attachment styles is they never really stop and ask themselves if they really like the person they're with because they're trying to please the person so much. It takes a long time for them to develop enough self-discovery to say, why am I in this relationship? Do I really have any commonality with this person? Why am I here? A lot of them don't ask that. And when they do, it's very late into the relationship. They become basically their people pleasers. And remember, people pleasers only generate takers. So this is a very common one. About 15% of the population has this anxious type of style. The best character I can think of, and this might be a little controversial, is Beth on the show Yellowstone. Beth has intense emotions and fears of abandonment. You remember in the show, they go back to when her mom died. They go back to all these different scenes of Beth. Beth was a little bit wild when she was younger. Beth was a little free sexually when she was younger. Beth generally has always had a boyfriend or a man in her life. This is somebody who has an, an anxious attachment style. They're usually don't like to be alone. And the biggest sign you can tell that Beth has an anxious attachment style is how she relates to her dad. She wants to please her dad. Anything her dad wants, she will do for him. Now that's not a sexual relationship, but it's still an anxious attachment style. She does not want to disappoint her father. Beth would be probably out of all the characters in that show, she would have an anxious attachment style. The third one is an avoidant. Now I know a lot about avoidance because I know I am a, an avoidant. And so I could write a whole book on just of the avoidant attachment style. This is somebody who has the idea thought is, I'm okay, but nobody else is okay. The avoidant is uncomfortable with intimacy and being too close. And I'll say we, because I do fall into this, and I've done a lot of work on this, and I'm still doing a lot of work. We are happier one foot in a relationship and one foot out. We're never fully happy in a, in a whole relationship nor are we ever fully happy outside of a relationship. We like to be close. We like the idea of being close to somebody. And generally speaking, early on in our relationships, we're all in, we're very close. But then we become avoidant. We start not wanting to be so close. We want our space. We don't want to have this 
feeling of being suffocated. And it really has nothing to do with our partners. It's just the way that we're wired. Again, this starts, guys, like when you're two years old. And it's kind of like an abandonment trauma to a degree around your parents. So we have the same need for closeness and intimacy as anybody else. But we suppress those needs and avoidance suppresses the needs. And one of the ways that we do is we focus on the negatives of our partner. Avoidance also tend to be very defensive. We don't like when somebody is giving us even making fun of us or even taking jabs, we don't like it. It's it, Again, it's got nothing to do with the person. It's got more to do with us and how we perceive ourselves and how we perceive the situation. But avoidant is <clears throat> we want to be close, but we don't want to be too close. And it takes a lot of work from, A, at least understanding you're an avoidant. And when you are in a relationship and a relationship with my girlfriend, actually my girlfriend is an anxious style and an avoidant and an anxious style. They clash perfectly because they're the mere opposites of each other. An avoidant and an anxious style generally is a lot of relationships. Okay. You have the anxious person wanting so much the validation and the love and the approval of the partner the avoidant and the avoidant is pushing back and saying, I love you, but I don't love you that much. I need my space. And it is a bit of a love bombing. It's a little bit of this and that coming up through the avoidant where they want the intimacy, but too much. They feel like they're being suffocated. And here comes the anxious style. The anxious wants more and more. And it's this yin and yang that can go on for years until one day, generally <clears throat> the anxious style, as I said before, they start thinking, why am I in this relationship? All I'm doing is trying to please this person. I'm not getting a lot back. The avoidant, again, is happy, kind of just waiting for the exit. And when the avoidant exits the relationship, very early on, he's extremely or she's extremely happy because, again, the thought is, I'm okay Nobody else is okay. So now we feel like I don't have to deal with this person's fucking problems anymore. I don't have to deal with her drama. And then eventually it could be a week, it could be a month, however long. The avoiding wants to go back into that same paradigm and get into another relationship, never learning anything. The perfect example in Yellowstone is John Dutton. He is 100% avoided. He loves his family, but... He's very hard to get close to. He does great advice for his family. He works very hard. He provides for his family. He loves them. But nobody's very close to him. They're sort of close, but they know their limits with him. John Dutton is definitely an avoidant when it comes to the four different styles. The last style is a mix of anxious and avoid it. It's a very dangerous style to have. It's called fearful attachment. And it takes the worst traits of the anxious and it takes the worst traits of the avoidant and it <clears throat> brings them right into somebody's consciousness. It's a very, very hard attachment style for someone to be and it's also a very hard attachment style for somebody to love. As a population whole, maybe four or 5% of the population falls under this. So if you are a fearful avoidant, this is where you really do need to get into a lot of good therapy and really do a lot of deep work to get out of this because it's just not a healthy, none of them are healthy other than the secure, but these are, this is definitely not a healthy one to be in. This is the idea or the thought of, I'm not okay and you are not okay. They have a very low opinion about themselves and a low opinion about others or their partners. On the show Yellowstone, this one was a little hard, but Jamie, uh, John Dutton's, I guess, adopted son, the attorney, he would be the closest example of a fearful attachment style. And he 
wants the intimacy, he wants that closeness, like the anxious attachment cell, yet he wants to be left alone like that, avoided. So it's this idea where he doesn't think he's good enough for anyone, yet when someone shows interest in him, he wants to be close to him, but he doesn't know how to let them in. And so this is what that fearful avoidance style does. It's very toxic if you're in a relationship with somebody like this because one day they could be all over you, the next day they could be screaming at you for no reason at all. So these are the four different attachment styles. If any of these resonate with you, good. You at least know your attachment style. Now it's up to you to do some Googling, some research on it and how you can maybe understand your attachment style better and how, actually how to move your attachment style for whatever style it is, for whatever style it's in. If it's not in secure attachment, if it's not in number one, you want to move it into number one. The reason why you want to move it into number one is obvious. You want the best relationships you can and it starts with you. You want to have the best relationship with you. You want to be grounded. You want to be secure in yourself. You want to be secure in the understanding when you bring other people into your life, i.e. your lover, your partner, you're secure with them. You've made a good decision. You made a good investment in them. They made a good investment in you. You're moving towards more of this teamwork. This is what you want. This is what a healthy relationship looks like. As I said before, that secure attachment whole attracts whole. A whole person generally will get attracted by another whole person. All the other three attachment cells, they're not very whole. And so they have this dysfunction about them. So you want to do everything you can to bring yourself as close to secure as possible. If you can't do secure, I, I would say the next best one would be anxious. So at least anxious that can be managed. The other two are a little bit harder to manage, but anxious can be managed, especially if you're in a relationship with somebody who is secure. An anxious style can learn a lot from somebody who's secure. That's all I got on it for today. If you found this video helpful, please hit like, hit subscribe, and that bell icon so you know when new videos are being dropped. I like to mix up my channel with different ideas, not just talking about one specific subject and I thought that the next few videos I do will go a deeper dive into each one of these attachment styles but I wanted to give you guys a broad view of what they are so that you can recognize which one you are and hopefully recognize which one your partner is or pick up on what attachment style a potential partner is. With that my name is Jared this is Magnetic Men's Club, and we'll talk soon.